In this video, I'm going to be sharing some tips and hacks that first time cruisers might not know, but really need to. So let's get straight into it. Ahoy there, I'm Captain Chris. I'm not a real captain, but I'm here to give you five tips and hacks for first time cruisers. These are based on our recent trip on P&O's newest and biggest ship, Arvia. But all of them are relevant to the other ships in P&O's fleet and even to other cruise lines. And I'm going to talk about what to wear on black tie nights and whether you can get out of it, which I know is something that worries a lot of people who might be considering a first cruise. Now, tip number one is prepare before you leave home. Having some good information about the ports you'll be visiting will really help your holiday run smoothly. You're only usually in port for six or seven hours, so you don't want to waste time wondering what there is to do. So before you leave home, have a look at a few websites, such as PO Cruises Guides or What's in Port, to prepare yourself for your day ashore. So for example, in Cadiz and La Coruña, the main streets and attractions are quite close to the port, whereas Barcelona is huge and many attractions like Park Güell and the Sagrada Familia are too far away to walk to. This is where a bit of information in advance is invaluable to know about buses, the tube, taxis, or whatever you may need to see the highlights you're interested in. If you're traveling with children, you need to register them for the kids club before you leave home to avoid disappointment. You also register an adult to pick them up afterwards and the adult taps their card to show that they're the correct person to collect that particular child. The kids clubs are great. There's loads of things there that your kids will enjoy and there are different clubs for different age groups from two to 12. And Arvia and Iona have seen which is for age 13 to 17, and it's also called H2O on some of the other ships. There are also night nursery facilities where you can settle your child in and then go and watch the evening shows or do whatever it is you want to do, and you'll be contacted by the ship's crew if your child wakes up and needs your attention. There's loads of entertainment on board to see in the evenings, but remember that big ships like these can hold over 5,000 passengers. If everyone turns up at the theatre all at once, there's no way you're all going to fit in. So you really should consider booking any shows that you're really keen to see. The Greatest Day show was on when we went, featuring the music of Take That, and Chesney Hawks and Joe McEldry were singing in the Limelight Club, and these were really popular. But all of the evening entertainment venues get busy after dinner, so it makes sense to book. And remember that you may then need to book your evening meal on that night to ensure that you're not still dining when the show starts. Booking opens two weeks before you travel. You can book many of the restaurant venues in advance, and this might be a good idea, especially if you're celebrating a special occasion during your holiday. The chef's table, for example, comes at no extra cost and serves really lovely food chosen by Marco Pierre White with wines chosen by Ollie Smith. But it's a small venue and only open on black tie nights. So booking would be absolutely essential if you wanted to go there. Again, you can book two weeks before you leave home. Tip number two is put your phone on airplane mode. Now, are you going to be purchasing a Wi-Fi package? You can buy a Wi-Fi package for your whole cruise before you leave home, or you can buy a 24 hour package on an ad hoc basis once you're on board. There are different packages to choose from, but don't expect the ship's, wi ship's Wi-Fi to be as good as yours at home. Uh, there can be dead zones, uh, it might be slow, especially at peak times, although P&O are making improvements to speeds ship by ship. And I heard someone who took a Christmas cruise say that so many people wanted to send messages on Christmas Day that the whole thing stopped working. But the important thing here is to stop your phone from trying to connect to a mobile data service. On land, this is fine, but at sea, it may well connect to one of the maritime networks and these are expensive. So you need to prevent this from happening. The My Holiday website, which you use for booking shows once you're on board and joining virtual queues and so on, is available to all passengers, even those who haven't paid for a Wi-Fi package. So one option would be to only buy a 24 hour Wi-Fi package for the days spent at sea 
and then connect your phone to the mobile data service when you're in port. Alternatively, you could go without a Wi-Fi package completely and just use mobile data when you're in port and only the My Holiday website when you're at sea. But that means you'll be unable to use your phone for anything else on sea days, which I know is unthinkable for many people. A couple more points to mention here are the My Holiday website is a website, not an app. So you don't have to download it before you leave home. Uh, and also that if you have a medical need for Wi-Fi, like if you need it for a glucose monitoring device, for example, then Wi-Fi will be provided for that. So tell the cruise line or speak to reception to arrange that. Tip number three is really important. Don't miss the boat. If you go ashore and explore the port independently and you're late getting back, the ship will leave without you. The all aboard time is in the Horizon magazine on port days. Remember it, take a photo of it on your phone. Remember to allow for any changes of time if you're traveling to a destination in a different time zone to where you set off from and look for the phone number of the port agent, which is also in the newsletter. If you even begin to think that you might be late, call the port agent and tell them your predicament. They might be able to help, but generally the all aboard time is not flexible, so don't be late. Tip number four is to remember to take laundry tabs with you if you plan to do any laundry during your holiday. There are plenty of laundry rooms aboard, but laundry detergent is not provided, so remember to take your own. Actually, there's a laundry service available on board where you can have items collected from your cabin and delivered back again, but this is chargeable. There are offers available though, like having 10 items cleaned for a fixed price, but if you want to do your own, bring the tabs. Now, before I come to the requirements of the dress code, can I please ask if you found this video at all useful or interesting, would you please hit the subscribe button and allow notifications? Subscribing doesn't cost you anything, but it means you'll know when I post another video and it shows me that you're enjoying the videos I've already posted, which is important to me, so please subscribe. Thank you. So now to the dress code. Is it strictly enforced? Does it apply everywhere on the ship? And can you avoid it if you want to? Well, first of all, let me tell you what the dress code is on P&O cruises, although other cruise lines may be quite similar. On a two week cruise, there'll probably be two black tie nights or celebration nights as they're sometimes called. On these, gentlemen should wear a dinner jacket or a tuxedo with a bow tie, but a suit, jacket and tie are also acceptable. Ladies wear cocktail dresses and ball gowns. The dress code doesn't apply to children. Military uniform and formal national dress are also acceptable, but if your national dress includes an item with a blade, you'll have to leave that at home. On the other nights, the dress code is smart casual, so shirts with trousers or dark denim, uh, skirts and dresses, and shoes, not trainers, and no tracksuits or football shirts. As a general point, at no time of day should you be wearing fancy dress, novelty outfits, or clothing with any kind of offensive pictures or slogans. The ships do sometimes have themed party nights like 70s disco, tropical or black and white nights. So if you'd like to join in with those, you might want to bring a suitable outfit. But what if you don't want to? Well, there are plenty of places on board where the dress code doesn't apply. On all P&O ships, the dress code doesn't apply in the buffet. On Arvia, Aurora, Azura, Britannia, Iona and Ventura, it doesn't apply in the glass house or the beach house. On Arvia and Iona, it doesn't apply in the Olive Grove or the Keel and Cow, and on Arvia, it doesn't apply in the Sixth Street Diner. So as you can see, if you just want to spend your whole holiday in shorts and a football shirt, you can, and you'll still have plenty of places to dine. But if you enjoy dressing up, you'll have lots of opportunity. However you dress on your cruise, I hope you have as great a holiday as we did. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.